sort of the area of the ball that you capped in. Um, from your perspective tonight, what was so much better than it had been prior to this? Um, our communication was really good tonight. Um, our schemes, we, we followed our game plan to a T tonight. Um, I mean, we have a team to 85 points. Uh, we saw after the last quarter, you know, we did a really, really good job. <clears throat> You know, 15, 20, and 19 in the first three quarters. So, um, you know, we were just able to, you know, work as a unit, do what we were supposed to do. Uh, but I think our communication was 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 very on point tonight, which helped us with um, a lot of our coverages um, where we usually have you know, some struggles. Um, but when we out there communicating and, and, and guys are, um, you know, listening to listening to listening to everyone and making sure that. <clears throat> Guys are talking, holding guys accountable on the defensive end. Um, you know, we did. We 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 can play really good defense, and you know, we kind of been struggling in, in transition, and we were getting back, loading up. Um, you know, making sure guys saw several bodies and not just playing one on one. This is a question for the group. Um, you guys had a pretty decent sample size with go, going big in the first six games. How did it feel with the way you guys started with that first group, and what what are the things you like about about? What that group was able to give you tonight? Um, you know, I think you know, getting me on the perimeter, um, another live threat uh, with DJ and Dwight. You know, uh, we're great defensively. Well, we can be great defensively um, with the rim protection and letting our guards um, come back and get the rebounds and you know, and push Bron, Russ, um, and whoever the other wing is. So it's, it's some good components um, to us playing big, um, but there's also good components of us playing, you know, small when I'm at the five. So uh, we just take it game by game. And obviously, there's a matchup where uh, they don't have a real <clears throat> dominant, you know, post presence or a guy who's really dominant on the offensive boards. Um, so we want to look at that that small lineup when I'm at the five, um, but it, it can change game by game. Dave, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, also a question for the group. Um, you know, Rockets were competitive or, or trying to claw back in the fourth quarter. Is there any mention of, of what happened earlier this week in Oklahoma during that time, or did, did that need to be said? Was it just understood? Did, did that affect any way you tried to approach that last quarter of closing this out? Um, we just, I mean, we didn't score the ball. We scored 20 points. Uh, we just got to do a better job of scoring. Um, and then when you play a team like that, those guys are, you know, everyone is looking to score. And so they're going to make shots, obviously, but we got to make sure we score so we can't score 20 points in the fourth quarter. Um, and then our defense kind of slipped a little bit. Um, so, I mean, that was, that was that was really it. You know, we, we do our job scoring, knowing that, you know, when a team is down, you know, they have no no conscience. They're going to go out there and shoot the basketball. Um, and against us, shots go in. So we got to be able to, to score as well. LeBron, when Melo moved past Moses, you said that he just was playing with a great flow and rhythm, and it seemed like he's done that a few times since then. What about the way he fits with you and AD and the rest of the other pieces allows him to kind of make the game easy? I'm not suggesting it's an easy game to play, but he is, seems to be just finding himself in the right spot at the right time. Um, <clears throat> as the playmakers of this team, myself, AD, and Russ, it's our job to get our guys' great looks, um, where all they have to do is catch and finish or catch and shoot. Um, try to try to not make them do too much, even though you know Melo can do a lot with the ball. Obviously, he's, you know he's doing working off uh, pick and rolls as well, getting to his pull up game. But you know when it comes to efficiency and as far as what he's doing for our team right now, we're just trying to break down the defense, and he's finding himself either his man is guarding him and is leaving him, or you know he's in a great rhythm, so he's just just taking his shots and um, and he's knocking them down. So. You know, it's definitely big for us, especially having uh, you know some of our other playmakers out, having one of our two of our snipers out as far as uh, um, you know Wayne and, and Ta. Um, so Melo have definitely stepped it up from the perimeter, um, you know, for our perimeter shooting. Uh, LeBron, I'm sure you've sacrificed <laughs> quite a bit of on the food sort of sweet standpoint, and uh, I just wondered like how much candy do you a lot? Yourself on that lake tonight? Can you go into the pumpkins of the kids? Or how does that work? No, I don't. I don't even. Uh, I don't even cross it. Uh, you know, it's probably a lot of candy in the household right now. Um, just probably for my daughter. 
my boys aren't candy guy, uh, candy kids. They used to be, but they're, I mean, I got grown men in my house now, so um, they don't really eat a, a bunch of candy. So it's probably just my daughter, um, you know, and she, she can have whatever she wants, obviously, but I'll stay away from it. Hey, LeBron, at age 36, do you sometimes surprise yourself with what you're able to do, like that backwards uh, two-handed slam dunk? And then also, like, did tonight just feel like Lakers basketball, like more fun than it's felt so far this season? Um, no, I don't surprise myself because I know how much work I put into my craft and my body and preparing myself for the game. Um, you know, so I'm able to go out and do some things that other people are still questioning how I'm able to still do. Um, but uh, for me, the best costume, uh, I don't remember all the costumes. Uh, you had a good one. You had it. You, I think yours is good, too. That was good. I say bra. Yeah. Hey, it was good. It was Hades' costume was amazing. Yeah, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, fellas. Guys defended in the first three. Really seemed to have them on their back foot. Uh, what did you see on that side of the floor especially? Um, I thought that we were very aggressive defensively to come out. Uh, obviously with uh, Avery and Bays in there, um, those guys have two dynamic guards who can come out and score. Uh, a lot of points, so we just wanted to come out and just, you know, pick up the pressure a little bit, try to create turnovers, deflections, and uh, pack the paint on those guys as much as possible. And I think that uh, we did a great job, and you know, Avery and, and Bays were the the catalyst of that tonight. DJ, you've spoken about the uh, the willingness to play different roles. Uh, Frank has talked about. I have to give up a lot of things, you know, maybe shots, minutes, uh, touches, whatever it may be. Um, you know, nights you play a lot, nights you may not play at all. Uh, starting rotations, whatever it is. But, um, you know, I think that's what makes up a great team is us being able to give ourselves up for something bigger. And then last thing for you, is there any difference in the way that you are are playing with that type of a lineup coming off the bench versus uh, when you're with the starters? Is, is it the same basic way that you play, DJ? I think it's the same way I play. I don't... I, um, I don't change my, I haven't had to change my style of play up my entire career. I've been the same player, so it's it's very easy for me to, <laughs> to have that small adjustment. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm in there with different guys and, you know, and, and you know, Braun and, and AD will come back and Russell come back with that second unit anyway. So it's the same thing. I'm getting, you know, trying to get extra possessions, getting those guys open, getting to the dunker and being a defender. So um, as long as I do my job, you know, I'll be fine. Favorite Halloween candy? 25 minutes, 23 points, 8 of 14, 5 of 8 from Beacon of earlier. One of the more surprising stats, four blocks. And I heard Nello talking to Mike Trudell about that. Guys, check this out. He was 5 of 8 from 3. I know you guys talked about this in the pregame show. His 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 home and in, in away splits are, are, are insane. He's 23 <laughs> of 34, big game James, from 3 at Staples Center. No wonder why the crowd loves him. Yeah, they love him. You know, less travel. You don't have to get on that airplane. Older veteran. No, I, I think, you know, just experience of knowing how to bounce back from a, a, a subpar game that he didn't like. And also, like he said, getting used to, you know, understanding the tendencies. Tonight was, was, was an exceptional play of, he said, it, get into his spots. Not rushing in, being patient, being in the right spot when LeBron... Westbrook, anybody's going downtown, he has some really nice shots. So I expect this of him most of the season. A veteran player, they know how to bounce around pretty good. And for me, when I, when I watch Carmelo play, I always want to watch that first shot because he's such a guy, when he sees that first shot go down, mm -hmm. that means he's hot. Yeah. And if he shoots a great shot, that's what you want to see. And that first shot he took was no one near him. So it was an easy shot. He saw it go down, and I said, uh-oh. That's all he needs to keep keep going and going. He's like a microwave, so he's hot when he's when he's hot. He's one of the best shooters in the game. Yeah. So on the second day of free agency, the Lakers signed four players, three young guys. You know, they, they agreed to terms with THT. Uh, they got Malik Monk and they got Kendrick Nunn, and they also got Carmelo. Had had you told me that Carmelo of those four would be the most impactful this quickly in the season, I would have said you're out of your mind. Obviously, THT and Nunn a non-factor right now. They're not playing, but picking up Carmelo. And seeing him do even more than he did in Portland, you know, he got his 14, 15 points a game up there. 
He's getting like 20 every other game down here. Just, just a great, great start for him in a Laker uni.